So I'm Ryan, I'm back for another video. I decided to do something a little bit different this time rather than my usual upload, which is, you know, just recent jazz vinyl finds. So instead of that, I wanted to do, you know, just curate 25 records that I think would make the perfect introduction to someone who's just starting out in jazz. You know, this genre is just very vast. It can be overwhelming trying to find that first record to pick up. So I figured I'd, you know, I'd do my part in, you know, getting people into jazz. So here I curated 25 records based off of four things, which is affordability, availability, listening and difficulty, and then lastly, historic importance. So I'm just gonna jump straight into it. And I'm sure that there's a couple records that I'm missing. So, you know, if anybody has any other good recommendations, you can put them in the comments. I'm sure that'll, you know, someone out there will really appreciate that. So I'm just gonna jump straight into it with my first one here, which is actually, you know, a really good start. You got Charlie Parker, really, really the inventor of modern jazz. This, uh, this genre in particular is bebop, which is where a lot of, uh, a lot of the legends came up. You had, you had Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, just, just so many amazing musicians, even Miles Davis and Coltrane. Coltrane wasn't really, you know, on the scene around this time, but he was definitely, you know, he was listening to bebop and he was playing bebop. So his first one here is Charlie Parker, Swedish Snaps. This is a uh, volume eight on Verve. This is my original copy, but you know, the originals aren't, aren't always the easiest record to pick up. So I got another one here, which is the Japan pressing. I think this is from like the 80s or something like that. This is generally available. You can get this on Discogs for around 10 to $15 really. And you know, I, I love this hum so much that I have two copies of it. So can't really, can't really go wrong with this. Very first amazing, uh, amazing pickup for any Charlie Parker uh, album really. I think this maybe, maybe it was my first uh, Charlie Parker album. Maybe that's why I like it so much. Then my next one is, I'm actually have a, I have a few that I can go to. I think I'm gonna go to this one next. Lee Morgan volume three. You know, this album is just very, uh, it just, it drives so much. There's so many, so many amazing songs on here. I think uh, one that everybody would probably know is I Remember Clifford, which is probably one of the best ballads of all time for one of the best trumpet players of all time. But other than that, you have Hassan's Dream, which is the intro to Side A, which is really, I think, the perfect introduction. This would really be probably the best bet on my whole list to start out with. Just very, uh, very inventive, very inspiring session here. And then on this uh, album in particular, just some amazing players that really make up this session. You got Lee Morgan, Gigi Grice, who's an amazing writer. But in fact, he didn't write any songs on this album. It was all the compositions on here were written by Benny Golson, who was another amazing uh, tenor saxophonist. And then, then after that, you got Wynn Kelly, uh, Paul Chambers, and then Charlie Persip. And then, like I said, everything on here was written by uh, Benny Golson. So just a very good album. I really, I'd probably say this is a 10 out of 10. I really can't, I don't, I don't know how anybody could hate this album. This is generally a, uh, hard to get but you know with jazz and with this genre I think that even not even jazz in this genre it's uh it's more so vinyl in particular I think that always having a good start you know a good record to look for you know that you that is not you know available is something to keep you into it you know you always have to be on the hunt that's the fun part about this so I think this is a good record for you know something to look for this is probably the hardest record on my on my list that you could actually find. There is a 70s United Artists pressing uh, for this album, which comes up a, a little bit on eBay. I think it's probably around $70 that you could get it for. And that's, you know, that's, that's probably the highest price that you would have to pay for an album on this list. So the next one here is Wayne Shorter's Speak No Evil. Which, you know, it was just Wayne Shorter's birthday the other day, so I've been spending a bunch of him. But this is very easy to get. This came out on the Classic Series last year, 2021, and it's just a very inspiring session. Like like all of these, all of these records have so many amazing things in common. On this record, you have Freddie Hubbard, Wayne Shorter, Herbie Hancock, Ron Carter, and Elvin Jones, which that's really, that's really the super group of the mid-60s for Blue Note Jazz. Freddie Hubbard and Wayne Shorter, they were really, you know, they're, they're that amazing duo like Coltrane and Miles. Like I've said in previous videos, 
just those duos really drive certain albums and make you you know just going the back and forth is you know just something that they they push each other and it's something that's very uh, addicting in jazz any any album with a a good trumpet player and a good saxophonist just you know keeps you into it so this is an amazing album to get like i said it's available the classic series on blue note uh is generally like 20 to 30 dollars so it's it's very easily attainable so my next one here is curtis fuller soul trombone which i don't see too often really on any video like this so I felt like this would be a good, you know, a good pick. There's a lot of amazing songs on here. Uh, very good, like, mix of selections. You got The Clan, which is written by Curtis Fuller, but it's a very amazing intro into just this legendary album because there's some other amazing songs on here, like Dear Old Stockholm by Stan Getz, which I think, you know, anytime anybody does that song, it's just, it's amazing. It blows me away every time. And then the other song, actually my second favorite song, because, uh, actually, this, yeah, I don't know. I think all these songs on here are probably my favorite, but In the Wee Small Hours is a really good song, and, you know, just to hear a trombonist do it for the first time is something that I think any, everybody needs to experience. We all listen to uh, In the Wee Small Hours by uh, Frank Sinatra, which, you know, that's a, an amazing song. But once you hear the version on this, you will just, you know, just thank me later, really. Curtis Fuller's on here, just probably one of the best trombonists of all time. Uh, Freddie Hubbard, Jimmy Merritt, Cedar Walton, Jimmy Heath. You know, Jimmy Heath is really in that group of the tenor saxophonists of that day. You had John Gilmore, Coltrane. It's just amazing lineup here. And then you got G.T. Hogan and Jimmy Cobb, which, you know, the infamous drummer that was on Kind of Blue. You really can't go wrong with this album. I hope that uh, the Acoustic Sounds series picks this up because this is just an amazing, amazing introduction to jazz in my opinion. And then my next one is Mingus Album, which you know, this is, Charlie Mingus is a very, he's a very uh, intricate person. There's so many, there's so many directions you can go with him. There's so many, uh, you know, just within his discography, he had so many styles, so many ways that he went. And it was all on different labels, too. So I think to start with Mingus Am on uh, Columbia is just, you know, this is a very, uh, I think a lot of people would probably have this in their top five. So that, that just tells you a lot for this album. This is very, like, soulish bebop. Uh, it's kind of in the late stages of bebop, actually, but I think it's still, you know, it still has elements of that. This is actually a, a first pressing that I have here. I actually got this from a yard sale for a dollar a couple of years ago. So I'm very happy with this. I haven't picked up a reissue or anything lately, but this album is one of the best albums of all time, really. So there's so many reissues that you can get, so many amazing uh, sounding reissues, and then so many you know horrible sounding reissues. So generally you can get a good Columbia Legacy reissue for $20 maybe even 15 to 20 dollars so amazing amazing album then my next one is herbie hancock taking off this is just you know that that mid blue note 60s sound is just so inspiring it's it's very new it feels fresh so everybody on this album you got herbie hancock freddie hubbard dexter gordon butch warren billy higgins and in my opinion dexter gordon Butch Warren and Billy Higgins were really, you know, the stars of that, like I said, the mid 60s Blue Note sound. They really made, they really made the sound for Blue Note in the 60s. And I, uh, I think Herbie Hancock really just, you know, amazing leader. He wasn't really seen as a leader on, uh, on many other albums before this one actually. So I think this was just a really good start to his, uh, you know, his, not his solo career, but you know, his, uh, his career as a leader. So this is taken off by Herbie Hancock. And I think you can get this on the um, 75th anniversary series or 80th series, uh, generally available. Uh, if if you can't get it on that series, then you can also get like a, a late 60s, 70s copy. It's, you know, $30, $40, but it's very worth it when you really think about 
you know the material that was recorded here you got some amazing tracks on here watermelon man which i think you know everybody knows that song uh three bags full empty pockets the maze drifting which is probably my favorite song on this album and then lastly alone and i which you know just to round it out you need a good ballad so amazing album here herbie hancock probably one of the best pianists of our day so then my next one here i'm gonna go with uh working with the miles davis quintet this is a ojc copy very available very first you know it, this is an amazing album just to get into uh, miles davis with especially for his prestige era before he really got to uh because you know miles had so many eras of, of his career he had bitches brew he had you know in a silent way but me personally i uh i favor his early career on prestige and i think this is uh just probably one of the best of you know those couple sessions that he had on prestige that you know, it's it's very inspiring, albeit that, you know, he recorded it all in only a few days. So I think uh, getting this album is just, you'll definitely, you'll definitely understand once you hear it. You got uh, really the, probably the best saxophonist of all time, John Coltrane. My favorite, not even saxophonist, not even jazz artist, just artist of all time. John Coltrane is just very inspiring, very uh very like real you can really connect with him through his music um but I, I could i could just ramble on on and on about john coltrane but then you got red garland paul chambers philly joe you know just an amazing all-star lineup that i think we can all we can all look at and really appreciate because this was really this was really a monumental stage in jazz you know the just the after the bebop kind of faded away you had hard bop and I think this was kind of you know this is just I really can't even express like how I feel about not even just this album but really just the Miles Davis quintet in particular just very amazing group the very good introduction to jazz if you go down that road then my next one here is I'm gonna go with Freddie Hubbard breaking point some people may say this is a bit far out but there are some, uh, you know, Freddie Hubbard is not your normal trumpet player. He has some uh, rhythms and melodic lines that, you know, don't seem like, you know, they don't seem in line. They may not seem like it's something that you would play, but Freddie Hubbard pulls it off. And on this album in particular, there's a lot of bluesy tracks, a lot of good intros, like a few other ones that I had. You had Freddie Hubbard, James, James Spaulding, who plays on alto sax and then flute james spaulding is just you know he kind of picked up where charlie parker left off and then you you also have ronnie matthews who probably makes this album for me you got all these songs on here just in my opinion they're piano driven at least in the introduction like especially on side b because you have blue frenzy d minor mint and then mirrors which mirror is just a legendary track before you even get this album you just you have to stream it you have to hear mirrors and then you'll really understand where i'm coming from this is a very very good session i really i really can't even say anything else this is this is on the tone poet series you can get this for like 35 dollars maybe to 40 dollars somewhere around there and this just came out a few months ago so it's still in print very available so i, I definitely recommend that one and then my next one is a song for my father by the horace silver quintet and there's actually two groups on here but you have carmel jones who i've been getting into recently he's got a lot of underrated works and then on that set the same session you have joe henderson horace silver teddy smith and then roger humphreys who just you know drives that drives those first couple songs and then on the second session you have blue mitchell junior cook and then horace silver gene taylor and then roy brooks so i think this is an amazing start to not just jazz but horace silver in general he's a very very creative person he had uh, so many just directions that he took his career you know he started out really really early on he was on the lexington series with uh blue note and you know this album in particular is a bit latin driven and you can really hear that with you know 
The Natives Are Restless Tonight, which is probably my favorite track, Lonely Woman, and then, you know, this album is perfect. Like a lot of these other albums, it just, you re it really rounds it out when you have a good mix of tracks, ballads, and then, you know, fast bop songs. So I think this is an amazing session, very available. This was on the Classic Series last year. Definitely a, definitely a good uh, first album. And then my next one is gonna be, I'm gonna go with Adam's Apple by Wayne Shorter. And I had another Wayne Shorter album in here you've seen, but this is probably my favorite Wayne Shorter album of all time. Adam's Apple, you know, just came out on the Classic Series a few days ago. So I think to get this now is, you know, really the perfect time. It was just, it was just Wayne Shorter's birthday the other day. So I mean, you know, pay the man some respect and, and get his best album. Herbie Hancock's on here, Reginald Workman, Reggie Workman, and then Joe Chambers. Just very amazing session. I have the 75th anniversary series, which wasn't a good pressing, but I probably will sell this or, you know, hand this down to somebody else and then pick up that classic series. So very, very happy with this. There's a probably one of my favorite songs of all time, which is uh, Footprints, which Wayne Shorter did write. And the song actually was on um, Miles Davis's quintet album called Miles Smiles. And that was the first one that I heard. And I love that version. But when I heard this, I really decided that, you know, this is my favorite version. This is my favorite Wayne Shorter album. So very good, very good introduction to Wayne Shorter. This came out in the mid 60s. Uh, the original was on Liberty uh, for Blue Note. So during that, uh, that transitional stage and not just you know Blue Note in general, but the sound that was exerted by these musicians. So my next one, I think I'm gonna go with is Miles Sketches of Spain. You know, just getting into the orchestrated side of Miles Davis is kind of it's kind of difficult because there's so many directions you can go. You got the Porgy and Best soundtrack. You have his uh, you know he did a France soundtrack. I don't I can't remember the album. And then you got you know jazz track uh, side B. So, you know, Sketches of Spain is just a very good, very, just an amazing, very intricate, very complex, you know. Gil Evans was really, I think, you know, he was the head of this, this whole, whole project. You had Miles Ahead, you had, you know, Sketches of Spain, Porgy and Bess. Very good run that uh, Miles Davis did with uh, Gil Evans. And I think uh, getting this is, you know, you, you'll really hear the... It's just another side of jazz that I think everybody needs to experience. Whether you like it or not, it might not be your thing. And it's not really my thing compared to other, you know, subgenres of jazz. But this is a very good, very good album. Probably definitely in, a, in the top 10 for most people. And then my next one is going to be Clifford Brown with Strings. This is not... Definitely not talked about enough because... This album just follows a good mood, a good uh, a good selection of songs. They're all ballads for the most part, and that's what I love about this album. There's not really too many albums out there like that, but this album just blew me away when I first heard it. I actually heard it on vinyl for the first time. I got a really beat copy a couple years ago, and you know after that I really wanted a a good VG Plus copy. So I ended up with this a couple months ago. Very very happy with it. You know, Clifford Brown, like I said, probably one of the best trumpeters of all time. Very inspiring. You know, Sonny Rollins really looked up to Clifford Brown. There's so many people who looked up to Clifford Brown. Wynton Marsalis, so many amazing musicians that really, you know, were developed from Clifford's sound. Lee Morgan, really everybody. So that album is not, not really... It's kind of hard to get, but you know, if you watch it on eBay, you'll be able to get a good uh, reissue for maybe you know seventeen. I think I seen one go for seventeen dollars the other day, but you know, around twenty dollars, and I think that's a good uh, that's a good price for what you're getting because there's so many amazing tracks on there. Then my next one is gonna be Oliver Nelson, The Blues and the Abstract Truth, which is very available. This is on the Acoustic Sound series last year which I do have, but I wanted to put this one in. This is just, I, I favor this copy so much. This was probably one of my first couple jazz records of all time. I had somebody recommend this to me 
in a in a flea market actually he uh he was gonna get it but he actually found it in the bins and gave it to me for me to experience for the first time so this is just probably one of my favorite sessions i don't favor a lot of the other tracks on here but stolen moments is just a very inspiring very legendary track that i think people that don't even listen to jazz just really need to hear it because the people like the the guys on here are just crazy inventive you got bill evans roy haynes eric dolphy who really makes this album for me and then oliver nelson who was a very good very good uh composer he he wrote these songs and it's just it's just amazing to think that you know one man can can do something like this so after him you got paul chambers and then freddie hubbard and then if you really look at all these albums that i've shown here freddie hubbard seems to appear a, a lot on all of these and i think you're you know just like see that and uh you know take that for what it's worth you know when you see a lot of the same players on these albums you you know that you know there's some legendary guys and they were doing some things that nobody else could so my next one is search for the new land by lee morgan i really i really can't express how much i love this album when i heard the first track search for the new land it's very chilling it gave me goosebumps i, I wish i had a og copy but i have a 75th anniversary uh release and you got wayne shorter grant green reginald workman billy higgins herbie hancock just the perfect perfect lineup for a session like this very uh monumental stage in jazz you like all these albums like i said but they had an intention with this album they were writing for something they were playing for something and that was you know just what the african americans back then had to go through which is very uh very depressing to think that you know everything that they had to go for i i feel like that's another topic in of itself i could i could probably do another video on that just how that inspired you know jazz in general but just amazing amazing session you can really hear how how powerful uh, these guys are playing. You can really you can feel what they what they're going through. Especially Wayne Shorter on his his solos on Search for the New Land, very fiery and inspiring. Just very uh, very good album. I can't stress enough how how like how much you need this in your collection. This is not not the easiest album to get even the 75th anniversary series tends to go for like fifty dollars or somewhere around there but i'm sure that this will be reissued on the classic series here soon and i just could not i did, could not hesitate to to put this on a list like this just very very good session definitely my favorite and then my next one is gonna be midnight blue by kenny burrell very probably one of the best guitars albums of all time everybody knows this album it's very available this came out in the classic series last year this is a first copy i got you know i really didn't i hesitated on getting the classic series because i wanted an early pressing and i ended up coming back with a og deep groove mono and you know the earlier stereo copies tended to have some sound issues because the recording engineer legendary recording engineer rudy van gelder he was having some issues you know the early stages of stereo and you know kenny burrell's guitar just to line all that up it was very difficult you didn't really have too many um guitar led you know blue note jazz sessions that really cooked like this so i think this is just an amazing first start even if you want to get into grant green this is this will get you there you know, you listen to this and you go to Grant Green's first stand, you can you can really go any direction within this. Kenny Burrell and Grant Green were really, they were holding that title down on Blue Notes. So I really believe that, you know, jazz guitar is the best guitar in my opinion, but I'm sure that's a very controversial opinion. But anyway, my next one is Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. Most people would just, you know, call this Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers just moaning. I think there's a few compilations or, you know, just reissues of this where they just, you know, they call it moaning. And this is a, my pressing is like a third press, no deep groove. Uh, it's got the R, 
I think it, I'm not sure what the first one had. I'm, I think it still had the ink, but I don't have a first pressing. This was on the Classic Series last year. Very available. Probably, uh, probably one of the easiest to get, you know, lowest price because, you know, they recorded, I mean, not, not they, they didn't record. Uh, they released this album, reissued it. You know, this is just one of the top five albums of all time for jazz in particular. So they had to make a bunch of it. And you, you know, it's just, when they make a bunch of albums, the prices tend to go down. So very easy to get. I'm sure you'll see it in any, any shop that you go to. And then my next one is Way Out West by Sonny Rollins. Sonny Rollins had a lot of uh, very good transitional stages in his career. You had Way Out West, you had The Bridge, just so many amazing sessions with so many amazing diverse lineups. Like on here you have Shelly Maine and Ray Brown. It's just very amazing to think that Sonny Rollins could, you know, move around and, you know, go around with different players. You had a, a lot of other uh, albums that I have on this list. You'll find that a lot of the same players tended to you know, be on them, but Sonny Rollins, he tended to have new players, introduce new guys on there, which I think is what makes a legendary jazz musician. You had Charlie Parker introducing the world to Dizzy Gillespie, and you know, just so many amazing musicians. You had Dizzy Gillespie introducing the world to um, John Coltrane and Lee Morgan, so just for for this album to come out around the time that it did, very inventive stage of his career. Not uh, not anything like Bridge, like the Bridge, by Sonny Rollins, but definitely uh, def definitely worthy of picking up. This is very available. This is my OJC copy. I want to get a original mono copy soon, but just haven't gotten haven't gotten around to it. You know the barcode's on this, so you know it's generally available. Recent pressing, reissue. So, I'm sure you'll see this in a, any shop you go to as well. Very, very good album to get, especially to start out with Sonny Rollins. And then my next one is going to be... Hmm. So now I'm down to my top five, I'd probably have to say. So I think I'm going to go with Blue Train by John Coltrane, just for the fact that, you know, this album is coming out, it's being reissued in mono and then in stereo on the Tone Poet series with alternate takes. So, you know, just getting this album and picking it up, just do yourself a favor and get, you know, one of the best sessions really of all time in all of jazz history, all, all the time periods of jazz. This really is uh, probably on everybody's top five list, like a few others on this list. Very good session. You had some amazing people that, you know, didn't, weren't really known back then. You had Lee Morgan, Curtis Fuller, John Coltrane, Kenny Drew, Paul Chambers, and Philly Joe. It's just very, uh, very good inventive stage, you know, that John Coltrane was coming out of. Just, this album can lead you down so many paths. For me, this Blue Train led me to uh, Sonny's Crib with by Sonny, Sonny Clark and John Coltrane. Donald Byrd is on that album, but, you know, just this album is very... Uh, definitely one that everyone needs so i have two copies i have this 90s uh direct metal pressing i think it's from the 80s or something like that maybe 90s i'm not sure but either way i'm very happy with it a lot of people look down on these pressings but i think they sound amazing and then my other copy of blue train is the black b pressing this one was actually my first got this a few years ago so very happy with this just sounds amazing there is no Rudy Van Gelder stamp you'll find that uh, the best sounding jazz records are really mastered by Rudy Van Gelder and he really does these sessions justice because the way that he the way that he thought like you know that he put you know he put someone else here in a different channel and you know his separation just all his techniques and recording just made for it really perfected these sessions and my next one is I'm gonna go with saxophone colossus by sonny rollins this is another ojc copy and I, this is actually on like the uh the blue marbled vinyl and i got this from fye it's like a fye exclusive of like 500 so i was very happy to get this this was probably one of the first records that i got 
along with a few others on this list actually. So very, uh, you know, a lot of people will put this on their top five. And personally for me, this isn't my favorite Sonny Rollins album, but it's, it's definitely up there. But it's very, very, uh, you know, just that, that good session that you want. It's nothing, uh, it's not, it's not like on the cutting edge of what was really going on back then, you know, like pushing the stage of jazz, but it was really just a perfect session, the ideal session for, you know, just that era. So I think this is just a really good album to get, definitely in the top five, you know, of all jazz albums of all time. Very easy to get. This is an OJC copy. Analog Productions has a, um, a mono pressing. I think it's actually still in stock on their website for forty dollars, which is you know very worth it because you're getting you're getting historic material. You're getting it from the tapes, which you know that's the one of the most important things is to get. You want these recordings from the original master tapes. That's the real authenticity. You know some records you can hear in digital, and you know they sound good. But just to know the physicality of knowing that you have a record from the original tape is just, you know, something else. So, all right, so I'm back. I actually ran out of storage on my phone. Had to delete some videos, which happens too many times when I record these. But anyway, my next one is Duke Ellington and John Coltrane. You know, if I were alive back then and I was looking at this album, you really see, you know, it doesn't really seem like that Coltrane and Ellington would mix. But, you know, opposites attract. Ellington had more of a calm, relaxed approach to the piano, while Coltrane was, you know, he was driving, he was pushing his sound, trying to find new directions to go on his horn. It's just very, uh, very inventive session. Really, I'd, I'd say probably definitely in the top five. Very, very good session. This, this album inspires so many people, like, not even just jazz musicians of, you know, our day, but also rap and hip hop artists. This was sampled a lot, really in the 90s, even now. This is very, uh, very inspiring album. Definitely, uh, probably a good first pickup. This is very easy to get. This is on the Acoustic Sound series. It released, uh, I think, er early this year. So you can get it for 30 to $40. I think it'd probably be the best choice, honestly. So very happy with this and before I got that one when I first started collecting I actually got this wax time reissue which you know wax time and you know reissue labels like wax time like you, you know they don't really they don't really uh, they don't really do these sessions justice they don't come from the original tape so just do yourself a favor and stay away from uh, these digitally sourced you know, I, I wouldn't call them unofficial releases, but just these digital source albums. I mean, if, if you have no other choice, you can you can get something like this. It's fairly cheap, $10 for maybe a wax time reissue. But like I said, do yourself a favor and pick up something that was, you know, came from the original master tape. So not saying that I'm disappointed in picking something like this up because I definitely learned in, in comparing this album to, you know, the Acoustic Sound series, you really understand it. You know, it's more so something you have to hear rather than taking my word for it. All right, here's my next one, Soul Station by Hank Mobley. One of the, you know, the middleweight of the sax, tenor saxophone. Just very good, very good tenor saxophonist. One that uh, definitely underrated. I think, uh, you know, Blue Note doing this classic series and, you know, reissuing his albums is definitely a, a good choice because he was really he was really driving that early Blue Note sound, late 50s, early 60s, even in the mid 60s, which is, you know, when Blue Note sound kind of started to change, but Hank Mobley was always there for it. Definitely a, probably one of the best saxophonists of all time. He wasn't really always on the cutting edge, but he always, you know, he always made a good session. He always rounded out any, you know, he was always a good side man, really, really anything, any way that he could provide, really. He wasn't always, you know, reliable in that in that day and age. He, he had a lot of issues with drugs and everything, but 
you know, just like a lot of other musicians like Charlie Parker, they always stuck to their they always stuck to their guns with the music. And they did some they did some amazing stuff, pulled some stuff off that I that no other musicians could. Just very good session. I actually really got into um jazz in general, like just going to the obscure stuff because of Hank Mobley. I went to uh Texas and I found two original Hank Mobleys, which you know, finding a Hank Mobley album uh, it's just very difficult, very, uh, very expensive album. It's just very, uh, very hard to get a hold of. It, that's why all these, uh, all these classic series releases and tone poet releases, it's just very good session to pick up. Very, you know, affordable. It's definitely worth the money. Twenty dollars to forty dollars. Just a really good uh, choice. Really good uh, first couple records to get would be a Hank Mobley record. So anyway, my next one is, I'm going to go with, uh, all these are probably obvious picks, but I'm going to do John Coltrane, my favorite things. This is a Presswell, I think, press from like the early 70s. This one is generally affordable. I got this for like close to $30. It's in near mint condition, but... You don't have to get this. You can get this uh, Rhino reissue, which is actually a two LP set with mono and stereo, and this just came out, you know, a few months ago. I pre-ordered this as soon as they announced it. You know, I almost didn't have to think because mono, my favorite things, and stereo, my favorite things. It's almost like two separate albums. Mono is just, you know, I think it's like I said before. You really have to. You can't just take my word for it. You really have to experience it for yourself. Hearing mono session, you know, it really comes down to what subgenre of jazz you're listening to. If it's uh, if it's like a ballad or something, you may want to hear that in stereo. If it's free jazz, I've come to learn that I also want to hear that in stereo. But when it's bop or when it's, you know, straight ahead, I, for the most part, I want to hear it in mono. So there's a good mix on here. My favorite things is a very powerful energetic track to an extent it really depends on which part of the song you're on but very good session can't stress it enough i'm sure everybody already you know everybody already knows that this is probably one of the best records of all time not even just in jazz and then my next one is going to be something else by cannonball adderley this is also on the classic series i think this was reissued earlier this year actually so very very good session not my favorite blue note session but one that gets people into jazz very driving and you know these songs are memorable you you know just something else dancing in the dark autumn leaves just crazy tracks that you know these players pulled off perfectly personally i don't think that this is a cannibal utterly release i know it's under his name but miles davis had some you know he had some issues with the labels and stuff back then he was on prestige then he was on columbia but on here he performs courtesy of columbia records so you know miles is more of that you know he's a leader he's really uh really uh putting these tracks together in my opinion you know he's He's more inventive than some of these other musicians. Not saying that the other musicians aren't good, because Adderley is one of the best alto saxophonists of all time. But Miles, I feel like, was a genius when it came to, you know, being a side man. And this was actually kind of weird because Miles really wasn't a side man. You know, after really, really any part of his career, he wasn't a side man. Just that early stage with Charlie Parker, you know, in the Prestige era. He was, you know, doing his own stuff, and he developed that element of coolness that, you know, no artist could, you know, duplicate. So that's why I think that, you know, this is more so Miles Davis's album compared to uh, Adderley. But besides that, just a very good album, something to get you into in the jazz. Very inspiring and amazing tracks, like I said. So. You got Cannonball Adderley, Miles Davis, Hank Jones, Sam Jones, which Hank Jones, Sam Jones, brothers. And then you got Art Blakey to round it out. So perfect session. Definitely one that everybody needs.
And then, you know, I'm gonna have to put a Love Supreme in here because best album of all time. Really can't stress that enough. I had a very good lucky day at a flea market one time and I actually ended up getting a, it's not a first press, but it's a first club mono pressing. And, you know, just getting any early copy of Love Supreme is very difficult. You know, you have those those eras of the early Impulse label, but this is my mono copy. Generally, still hard to get, very hard to get actually. But in my opinion, I wanted to hear this album in mono, and I'm very glad I got this one because it did it for me. Although I still, you know, I'm still searching for that that true first pressing, first uh, mono pressing. But you don't have to go for that one. You can get the Acoustic Sound series pressing that came out, which you know, you know, I even have it. So, you know, this is just very, uh, you know, it's almost like a staple to any collection. You know, even people who don't listen to jazz have this in their collection. Something that, you know, just. Coltrane was really on that the cutting edge of not just jazz but his his career his his path that he was taking he was thanking God you know for his talents for his ability to to play for us to you know to do something to have that much of a impact on the world so this you know I, I really could do a whole video on this album just very, very amazing session, very inspiring. The live sessions for Love Supreme were also very amazing. You also had the um, uh, Love Supreme live in Seattle, and there's also a few bootlegs that came out for that. So just very, very good album to get. And then lastly, you know, I can't have a 25, top 25 uh, good first records to get without Miles Davis' Kind of Blue. So this is actually probably one of my first jazz records. Haven't listened to this copy in a long time because I have the Analog Productions uh, 33 cut, which the 45 cut is coming out in a few days. So if, if you want to get into it now, you know, you may as well get the 45 cut. That'll be the best, you know, sounding version in my opinion. But anyway, I got this 33 cut. This is like an Amazon uh, exclusive on blue vinyl doesn't sound the greatest compared to the analog productions pressing but you know you can't you just can't go wrong with this there's so many pressings for this album and you know I'm sure some sound great and some don't but just to just to get this here for the first time this will really set you off on a on a whole new direction personally this was my favorite I mean, I'm not my favorite cuz I I have a a few other favorites compared to uh, kind of blue but this was my first introduction to jazz in general, so just to round the video out, to end it out, just figured I'd go with Kind of Blue. So I want to thank everybody for watching, again, for the continued support. And uh, I just wanted to do my part and make a you know a good top 25 records that will get people into jazz. And like I said, this genre is so vast. There's so many choices you could take. Very overwhelming. You just almost need somebody to give you that kick to you know, get that first record and start out on your um, really, I'd, I'd call it a journey because when you get into jazz, you really discover like a whole another world. There's so many amazing musicians, even that I haven't gotten to yet. So many obscure artists that aren't appreciated. So, you know, just streaming these albums, you know, there's some stuff that's not available on Spotify and Apple Music. So when you get into vinyl, you really find yourself into a whole new, whole new world. Home, Whole new direction so many directions to take like I said but very uh, for me was a very good uh, just stage of my life getting into jazz just uh, it helped me through a lot of things and I think you know it's something it keeps you going and you know there's a lot of you always learn in a genre like this like you know in other genres there's so many things that you could attribute to any genre really but jazz is really a special one for me and I think you know a lot of other people out there would have to agree with me we all have our uh, you know our favorites and our reasons for why something may you know be our favorite but I think uh, it's really up for you to decide it's all a matter of perspective when it comes to jazz 
and you know all these albums on this list they may be the wrong choice for you you could uh you could go for something else but personally these are my top 25 you know just to get someone started on uh on jazz in general so thank you for watching uh, i'm gonna do some more videos later on i want to do one on um you know how to identify pressings and stuff like that so be on the lookout for those too thank you